We Germans don't dare to shout in that way. Okay. So I welcome you to our last session of this day um, with a totally natural landscape produced uh, last evening. Welcome. Uh, we are here together to think about a little bit about our day, become aware about some tasks we still have to do. And uh, first of all, I want to say that there were people who had a delay or there were visa problems. And this means that the program wasn't always as we exactly expected it, but I have the impression that you're all very happy with what we had. It was a very interesting day. And yes, I'm not good enough in mathematics to tell you about percentage, how much time is passed. But yes, it was the first day. So my name is Siko van Dijk. I'm uh, on the board of the user group. And we have today, among other things, very modern technology, uh, top of the edge technology, in order to find out about your opinions and give you more information. And therefore, I would like Ivana to take us to the first question. It's just for starters to try it out. You see there's the AHA slides. Please join us. Go with your, yes, you're allowed to use the screen. With your smartphone, go to AHA slides. There's the code. Difficult. Okay, I'm ready to play. Raise your hand if you need more time before we move on. Okay. We see 49 people. Okay. All right, if you need it afterwards, the QR code will still be available. So this is just for starters, it's just to try it out, and it's a very simple question. Should be a very simple question, so oh, submit. Ah, okay. So this, of course, all these three entities exist, but um, Liana is the president of one of them, and you all know of uh, which one. Could you please do the second question? What was the best session of this day? Right, okay. All right, you see, this is not a quiz, this is just a social test. Yes, and uh, the next one, please. Yes, and this is just give us one word. How do you feel now? Yeah. 
Here, I will unlock this. Yeah. Another 20 <laughs> seconds. It's our first time that we use these R slides. We will fix this for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a laptop with me, so you are going to... I will to fix this for tomorrow. Yes, multiple, you can put in multiple words, but well, it looks we have one central feeling and a lot of side feelings. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and now about business. This conference isn't just for being a conference and having fun and learning a lot. It's, of course, with saving the world is great, but we hardly make any impact on social media, and this is where you come in. So. Think of the pictures you took today, what you learned today, the new ideas, and make yourself heard, you and the conference, of course, on social media. And uh, if you haven't done so, um, um, we have something different uh, later in the program, but uh, yes, yeah, social media of all kind, Facebook for the elder, older people, and <laughs> TikTok for the... Uh, you, you remember the TikTok conference where after 48 uh, seconds, people went away because they couldn't concentrate anymore. <laughs> All right, I think you get the message. Liana, the next one, please. Yes, and this is about tomorrow world. The hashtag, oh, uh, the hashtag, indeed. It is EduWiki2023, thanks to Florence, who made it up. Wasn't it you? You twittered with that hashtag. Yes? So EduWiki 2023 is our suggestion. If you take just EduWiki, I think it's the same amount of people who is going to read those tweets. Yes? Tomorrow World, uh, today Liana and tomorrow Cornelius will talk about questions like, well, will there be encyclopedias in the 21st century? Or why do people run away when the session is called strategic discussion? So therefore, we had the future discussions. And Liana is going to give us a summary. Yes, thank you, Zico. So thank you to those of you who participated in either um, of the two sessions that we did in the Belgrade room. Um, they were both vibrant sessions of um, participants. And I have summarized with help from other uh, members of our team some of the common themes that emerged from both sessions. Um, so we were working on two specific elements. The first one is we were trying to set a common definition of what the Wikimedia and Education universe is. And um, the, the themes that emerged across both groups, we identified the audience that our program reaches, our learners. And the programs we run all have some sort of pedagogical purpose. Um, in other words, we are connecting Wikimedia and education in some sort of mediated sense through our programmatic work. Um, and they are based on learning objectives for the participants. So participants are building some sort of skills, um, digital literacy, data literacy, all kinds of other important skills through the projects that we're running. Um, and they are aligned to educational curriculum, but we also emphasize that they are interdisciplinary, so they can cross all different disciplines, um, not just one particular area, and they have the flexibility to adapt to different contexts. And then finally, we noted that they are scalable, scalable and replicable. So people can modify and adapt the program model in different contexts and scale it up to have even more impact. So that was the kind of common definition that we had coming out of our, um, our sessions. And then we moved into the vision exercise. So in this vision exercise, we imagined that we were on stage at Wikimania in 2030 receiving an award for all the amazing um, things that we had 
accomplished in the next seven years. And I asked everyone to think about what we accomplished. Um, so common things that came out of both sessions were more funding for education in particular, um, increasing the overall global budget for our, all the work that we are doing towards better technical infrastructure, training, capacity building, and research. Um, another core theme was legitimacy um, with things like educational institutions, government bodies um, that lead to widespread adoption of Wikimedia in all educational curricula. So encouraging the presence of Wikimedia in every educational curricula across all levels, which seems pretty cool to me. Um, making it sort of part of the standard toolkit of an educator is using our projects. Um, we want it to be adaptive to changes in technology like generative AI. We'll obviously talk more about that on Sunday. And we want Wikimedia and education to be in every language, not just the ones we currently have Wikipedias in, but in every language in the world, and that we see the Wikimedia and education program as a vehicle to build Wikipedia content across all languages. Um, and then we were also interested in some sort of external recognition for our work, like a Netflix series or winning the Nobel Peace Prize, um, which that sounds pretty great to me. We'll see if we can get there. Um, and sort of what we achieved through that was that the movement survived. Wikipedia survived. We did well. Um, so you can see all of these. Some are written on text. Some are do in illustrations. I um, pulled a small fraction of the flip charts that we generated during these two sessions. My apologies if I didn't hang yours up, but they are hanging up in the lobby, and I encourage you to take a look at them as we walk out. Um, I will also plug, um, I encourage you to attend, you, if you did attend one of today's sessions or even if you didn't, I encourage you to strongly to attend Cornelius's session tomorrow, which will be on needs finding. So now that we've sort of set this common vision and, um, and created a common definition of what our program programmatic work is, what are the needs that we have um, to get us there uh, to that vision. And so this will be a great opportunity to delve way more into the specifics and detail, details of that um, from a global perspective. And that is the end of my section. So Zico, it's back to you. Yes, thank you. I will you. stand here great. and advance your slides. Thanks. <laughs> yes, and the next slide is about a nightmare I have to talk to you. It happened that I had a dream, a very negative dream, that I envisioned how all of you go home to your countries and then you are sitting there alone in front of your computer and you think, well, there's this education newsletter, but I always wanted to write something for it, but I don't know how, to, what about how to start. If I only knew someone from the newsletter committee, someone who could give me some tips maybe, Yes, and in order to make me happy again, I thought, Bukola, can you help us? Do you have some ideas, some tips? What to do with the newsletter? Okay, um, thank you, Zico. So, uh, some minutes ago, like hours ago, we did uh, some session on how you would get a hang on, on um, sharing your story your stories of um, education activity that you have carried out in your various community because um, sh I would like to reiterate that um, earlier, Shani made mention of the uh, ch external challenges that we face do doing our education activity. And one of them was the lack of awareness, right? And again, uh, lack of recognition by stakeholders outside of the Wikimedia community. And how do we like prov uh, profile solutions to this challenge is by helping others learn more about the work that we do. And there's no two ways to go about that than publishing your stories on the education newsletter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, there's this, um, yeah. So I also want to talk about the need for publishing your story on the education newsletter. 
Now, I would also state for a fact that the education newsletter has increased the numbers of stories that they accept over the years. Now, unlike other newsletter, the education newsletter is always getting um, stories, people who want to get their stories, their activities featured. And most times we get stories from people who are not doing education related activity in the Wikimedia community. So, and this uh, calls for content. Like we have so many people doing so many interesting work in different uh, community relating to education. But then we don't get to see your story on uh, the education newsletter. We cannot help you create more visibility for your story if you are not willing to share with us. So I just want to also like uh, encourage us to please share your story with us. We know how to help you project your story. We can help you amplify your voice. We can also uh, help you get your message across to so many people who wants to learn from your, from your projects, from your activities, but we can only do that if you are willing to share your story with us. And you can do that on the education newsletter. We also like have a mailing list where once we, you publish your um, activities on our newsletter, we help you distribute to over 230 subscribers. And yes, that's a whole lot. Although <laughs> we haven't gotten to that, um, phase of having more people subscribe but if you subscribe then we have more people who want to also read about the story so it's it's calls for it's a clarion call that uh those that are carrying out projects in education needs to um not only execute projects not only implement programs relating to education, but also try to amplify their voice using various uh, channels that we have already like provided. And one of them is the newsletter. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And the next one, please. Yes, this is about your great session today. We have to look a little bit at the time, but I would like to ask, uh, the person or one of the person whose session will be totally randomly selected. So I have all sessions of tomorrow in this little wheel of fortune. So I would like to ask the lucky person to say very shortly, first, what it is about, and second, why is it great? Why is it important? Why should I go there? Yes, would you please? Regionalized approaches, regionalized approaches. Is there one person who would like to say two short things? If not, the Wheel of Fortune would, yes, no? Silesh, yes? So what is this about? Why is it great? So, oh, sure. Yeah, I think that's going to be a fun session, so please come. Yeah, so we will have, we will have like, uh, so it's going to be some showcase, some conversation hours between Bukola, so you heard the nice pitch that she has given. So you can expect how the session is going to be. And Nebosha, who is our education manager for Wikimedia Serbia. So we will be talking about the peer support network, like how we can all together, you know, support each other and reach out to the voices that has not been heard. And what has this peer support network, which is the EduWiki Outreach Collaborators, has been doing into reaching out to this regional communities, building leadership within these communities. And again, with the newsletter as well, how we are receiving the, how we are receiving like stories from the regions and what we are exactly doing. So that's a surprise. So come, come there to learn more about it. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Do we have time for a second one? Yes. Oh no, this is the next question. Could you go back for, for a second one? Yes. because it was quite some work to uh, put all the names in the wheel. 
please very shortly, what is it about, why is it great? Community Beyond Wiki.com, yes, please. Yes, stay, stay there, stay there. I wasn't there. prepared for this class. Stay there. Yes? It should have been tomorrow. So, what is about, why is it great? Uh, so, I'm very happy I'm here, so you have to come to me because it's my first international wiki meeting in person. <laughs> so, and I would like to my, uh, combine in 45 minutes, like, short speech and also workshop with you guys to show how to invite uh, not only Wikimedians to find great events that the local communities will remember forever, uh, like her story walks and other things and how to do it step by step and um, uh, based on your resources and context and everything so wonderful okay. great I think we want the third one do you want the third one yeah. yes okay are you also excited it works better mm -hmm. MCDC strategy. You can use this one. Who wants to? Yes? I'm coming. I'm coming. We meet. I'll quickly run there. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for this pressure. When I submitted this, this was movement strategy and education, and it, it turned into MCDC movement strategy and education. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm wearing this MCDC hat on right now. Uh, so I'm a member of the Rules and Responsibilities Group on Movement Charter Drafting Committee. And because we are brainstorming on how we can actually review the current rules and responsibilities and how we can modify, if required, those current responsibilities and rules. So the tomorrow's session is going to be an interactive AHA slide session again to actually gather inputs about what do you know about strategy, uh, what are your uh, ideas and thoughts about how Movement Charter is going to redefine the movement or what are your expectations from the charter and how do you see this impacting the education community at large so yeah so please don't have very high hopes because I'm still learning but yeah this is just an opportunity for us to learn more from you and less from uh, like any kind of in, uh, like we don't want to share anything from our side as MCDC it's more like an information gathering session so that we can use the wisdom in the room thank you that really was great thank you Yes, and a moment before Ivana has some last information. Yes. Yes, like in a, in a minute. But uh, first, uh, my unconventional conventionist movie quote number sixty-eight of the twentieth century. Um, we have one last question. How will you dress for tomorrow? In a onesie, in a superhero costume, or in Serbian traditional dress? Okay, okay. A lot of activists are here. Okay. Well, this will be very mixed tomorrow on Saturday. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for participating in this social test again. And I understood there are some technical informations. And I say, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Zico. So the so, only bit of information, oh, go ahead, Ivana. Yeah, so um, the dinner will be in the same restaurant we had lunch. Uh, uh, so uh, 6.30, uh, you can have dinner there. Yeah, that's it. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all.